Uh, how many does Blake have already? Oh, <laughs> he's keeping count of scores? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He did have a big game out there. He finished with 24 points, 11 rebounds, mm. 6 assists. That's special right there. And it, and it looks like they're handily up in the third quarter, up by 20, so they shouldn't run away with this, right? Well, the Clippers would storm back in oh. that fourth quarter to take the lead. That was Montrez Harrell throwing it down. Then Shea filled just Alexander. Love you, Shea. Love you, young fella. Mike Scott working in the post. Get him, cuz. Ooh. We'll get them buckets, Mike Scott. That would cap a 24-5 run, tying things up at 91 apiece. And then Lou Will taking over in the fourth quarter, scoring 18 points in the quarter alone. Well, I was impressed because a lot of it was going to his right, TD. We know he can go left. Yeah. All left, Going yes. right tonight yes. was like late in your career, you can have some new strikes. Right. But you look at their bench, their bench scored 90 points, so that bench was so effective tonight. Lou Will finished with 39 points in this game, getting it done both inside and out down the stretch. Yeah. And that would do yeah. it. That Reggie, yeah, whoever that was. Sorry. He is a professional bucket getter. Man. That he is. It's unbelievable. His size and then you force him right, force him right. He shows you can go right and then the last bucket yeah. to close the game. Going right left. Back going left. <laughs> the Clippers go on to win it 111 to 101. Now, the Brooklyn Nets wrapped up the month of January with an 11-4 record Saturday night in Orlando to face a Magic team that's lost seven of their last nine. But there's a couple of all-stars, Vooch, D'Lo. Both guys very deserving, working hard, staying consistent. And obviously for Brooklyn in the playoff hunt, and D'Lo just looking real smooth with it. That would tie things up at 35 apiece. Then, Vooch running the pick and roll for the one slam that he does Oh, so well, TD. Down below. Watch your head down below. Strong <laughs> finish at the basket. The final seconds of the half here. Shabazz Napier, what, look, gets it to go. Big it's shot maker, young fella. To beat the buzzer. He had 15 points in this game. And D'Angelo Russell coming out shooting here in this third quarter. A three-pointer with a hand in his face. He had 23 points. But Vooch taking over down low in this game. He scored 12 of his 24 points in the fourth quarter. Well, you know, Jared Allen's a good shot block. But look how he uses his body just to create enough space. And there's that baby soft touch hook he's been making all season long. That he has. Ooh. Okay. The Nets, though, still yeah. in the playoff. Oh, Vooch, don't give him the baby dream. I like that. I like the nice fadeaway. Mm. One of the toughest shot, hardest shot to block is a fadeaway. Magic go on to win at 102 to 89. Not easy, though, to take mm. down a red-hot Brooklyn Nets team. That is true. They have been playing really good basketball over the last month. So That they have. And as we mentioned, a couple of all-stars in that game. Let's take a look at what the Nets, led by D'Angelo Russell, were able to accomplish in the month of January alone. I mentioned their 11-4 and record. He was averaging nearly 24 points on 48% from the field in this one, but also distributing with seven and almost a half assists. Well, he's a new poster child, in my opinion, TV, where you don't give up on a young guy nope. early in his I career. We saw things not go particularly well in L.A. now and a new scenery, a new voice in his ear. Right. Now he's playing to his potential. And, and we thought he was a problem in L.A., but it seems like he wasn't. It's like you said, a new scenery, opportunity, and then Coach Axon has so much confidence in his kid, and you can just tell by the way he's playing, and it's spread throughout that team. Well, game time continues after the break on a 12-game Saturday night in the NBA, including this guy, Luka Doncic, who I believe has a couple of new teammates. Oh, he does? Soon. Ooh, Did the, you hear? Yeah, he's the Don, what I heard. <laughs> 14 points late in the game. He needed three more quarters. <laughs> right? Yes, yes. Three more quarters would have definitely got him to 40. <laughs> the Warriors went on to win at 115 to 101. Let's go ahead and check in with Steph after the game. Here he is with Lisa Salters. <laughs> Such a smooth way to remind you he's a two-time MVP. What were you telling yourself at... Well, I don't know. This doesn't happen often. <laughs> I'm not used to having to come up with that inner dialogue. No, and I just, I just think the fact that you play the game the right way, you know the ball's going to come back and find you, and that's just the way the system is for those guys. Right, and just understanding what you need to do to help your team out. It's not always about scoring. Just having Steph on the court gives you a guy that can make shots, but just his shot-making ability, you still have to stay at home. And it's still going to open up driving lanes for guys like Iggy, Clay Thompson, Durant, and it's a luxury when you can have a guy that you don't need his scoring.
Meanwhile, Steph's splash brother, Clay Thompson, <laughs> scored 28 points, 10 of 15 from the field. What did you see from his shooting? Well, mm -hmm. first of all, when you're watching guys that understand that the ball movement, the player movement is premium one to the Warriors. So Clay Thompson's come in tonight and said, okay, Lakers, you get a layup, you're scoring, but we get out and run, we have great spacing. And y'all know I lead the NBA in knocking down catch and shoot threes. So I'm going to put the ball on the floor, get to the rim, get a couple layups, get myself going. But once again, when you have guys run to the three-point line, nobody's in the paint, you're able to get all the way to the basket and kind of trick the defense. Same play here. Y'all know I can make threes. You're pushing up on me. I'm putting the ball on the floor. I'm attacking the defense slowly but surely, getting myself in rhythm. Yes, I missed the game previously for the illness. Now let me get another layup. Good contest by Beasley, but not enough. Now, remember I said spacing? Remember I said players know their system? They know eventually the defense is going to suck into the lane. Now you pop out, leave it, splash. You <laughs> knock down the three. You remind everybody, yes, I missed that game the other right. night. They missed my shooting ability tonight. I come back and remind people. So once again, the Warriors share the basketball, player movement, ball movement. And when they're playing this well in February, it's got to be frightening for all 29 other teams. I mean, it's scary anyway just watching these guys play throughout the season, especially when everyone is healthy. If this team can stay healthy, you know, they could be NBA champion once again. But the way they play, the chemistry, how well, as you said, how well they move without the ball, they know one another. The best teams and teams that have won championship have great continuity, and that's because they've been together for a few years. When you have players that have been together one or two years, we don't really know each other that well. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you can put guys that can stay together four or five years, and also another key is keeping your coaching staff together, mm. being able to develop your young talent, but also having guys that, your players trust in and they know. And a lot of times it gets missing because of the talent. But when I have four coaches that I've won championship with, those guys know me and I know them. And somehow that continuity has not been disrupted by welcoming mm. Boogie to the roster, who seems to be fitting in flawlessly. It's fitting in flawlessly, and you can never overestimate the fact that he was there for training camp. That's the key. He didn't come in late. He didn't get traded there. Yes, he was in it, but he was rehabbing around the team. He was doing the training around the team. When he was getting healthy, Cuz went down to the G League. So it's little things like that lets yeah. me know his maturity coming into this situation is on a premium high. Why do we say that, TD? Because we know the microscope's on Cuz because right. they win the championship, and he's a big reason on why they win. Now some teams are going to say, well, maybe he's grown up. Let's throw him yeah. a bank load of money. Let's get their truck backing up. But Cuz is like, wait a minute. This is a team that's believed in me. I'm not just going to run away. But then the Warriors are saying, wait a minute. Someone offers you a four-year deal one night. Uh, I, I get your go. butt out of here. Yes, yes. Go get that money. Those guys are going to push him out faster <laughs> exactly. than he came in. But I still think with, with Cousin, just knowing those guys and having played with them, and they understand him as a player, we're going to help you out. There's nothing better than playing with veterans who won championship because those guys can have a different conversation than you going to another team and them not talking. They're talking about the playoff. This team is talking about winning an NBA championship because they have done it, and you can't teach that. Having seen him and coached him as many years ago as you did, TD, are you surprised that he's fit into this Warrior system so seamlessly and so quickly? I got a chance to see him, and even when GMs were coming in, and I was telling him, I said, hey, DeMarcus is a great kid. I said, he loves the game. He wants to win. He's passionate about what he does. Mm -hmm. Don't get his attitude caught up with him not enjoying his teammates because John Wall, all of us on the coaching staff, we all love DeMarcus. DeMarcus just wanted to win. At the end of the day, going to Sacramento, it was not a winning environment. You know, that organization was not winning at the time. They've done, done a great job this year. Mm -hmm. But when he was there, he wanted to win. But what he understood was, I have to play with guys that are that is as passionate about the game as I am and want to win as much as I do, and I will do my part. He understands his role with this team right now. He's not going to disrupt this team because this team has won championship, but having those veteran players make the transition a lot easier. Well, we've got a lot more highlights to get to on a 12-game Saturday night as game time continues next with James Harden and the Houston Rockets. Looking to get back on track after dropping two in a row in Utah to play the Jazz. We'll be right back. So late is my time. You know, I gave uh, the city, organization, fans, you know, um, everything I felt like I could. Uh, don't know how long I'm going to play this game. Um, people careers are short. You know, and I feel like 
took my time to move on. Was there was an ultimatum it? issued about uh, wanting to go to the Lakers? <laughs> no, I never gave a, New York, my representation never gave Pelicans, you know, a, a destination or, or anything. So I'm not sure where that's coming from. Uh, maybe the connection, you know, with my representation, but we never gave a, um, Pelicans a, a destination. So you would be willing to play elsewhere other than <laughs> in one place? It's really not. It's on the Pelicans. Um, Anthony, did you and your representation talk about the fact that if you're, if you're not traded by the deadline, you potentially may have to sit out the rest of this season and won't be able to play? Uh, my intention is um, to play. Um, I've been working to get my finger back healthy. Um, obviously, um, it's a tough situation, but you know, my intention is to, to still play. Um, and when I'm able to play, um, I plan on suiting up. What was the thought process of making your, your request public? Um, all those questions. Um, you, know, you contact my agent. He's, you know, he's more than happy to uh, inform you guys on that. Was the, the timing, um, obviously, that was, was that when the decision was made, or had you thought about that before and just were, it just became the time to do it? Time to do it. Of, of, of announcing your uh, request. Had you made up your mind before that, or was it just it, there was a realization and then you had the conversation? Um, obviously, you know, you, you think about stuff, um, and, you know, we just felt like, you know, that time, actually the day wasn't, you know, planned. And honestly, you know, my reputation didn't you know, drop the story or leave the story or anything like that. Someone else had gave it to a reporter, a reporter called my agent. And you know, asking was this true? So um, we never wanted to leak it to the media. Um, wanted to do everything in house, but um, but that, that wasn't on us. Was the timing determined to uh, get a trade before the uh, All Star? I mean, before the deadline? Uh, I just thought you know, doing it sooner than later. Um, not just for myself, just out of respect for the organization. Um, Ms. Benson, um, they've done everything for me. Um, the fans, the community. Um, so giving them an opportunity and enough time to be able to make a decision for the organization. Was there where, anything in particular that happened that made you say, okay, now's the time to make the request? Or no. where, when and why did this organization not give you the confidence that you could win a championship here, that you could win uh, at a high level? Like you said, you know, that you, that's the reason that you wanted to leave. Um, like I said, I just feel like it's my time, you know, and it's just as simple as that. The saga continues. Here's another Woj bomb. The Lakers first offer to the Pelicans for Anthony Davis. L.A. offered Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Rajon Rondo, Michael Beasley in a first round pick. Who you do not see listed there is one Brandon Ingram. So a lot of moving parts in this Anthony Davis trade saga. But the number one question, is the deal going to get done before the trade deadline at 3 o'clock on Thursday? Because you heard Anthony Davis say, sooner rather than later is what he'd prefer. Well, it's, it's all based upon what are you willing to offer if you're, you're the Lakers. And Magic put out something that didn't get a bite. And I think that, you know, going forward, they're going to ask or require, you know, everything is safe outside LeBron James. That's clear. So they're going to require Zubac. They're going to want Kuzma. They're going to want Ingram. They're going to want possibly another pick, and they probably even say throw in Josh Hart. So when you ask for pretty much the whole young nucleus, the whole young foundation, and obviously Ball also, they're going to want all those pieces uh, acquired in this situation. And, you know, I was able to talk to a source very close to this situation. And the word was, if it's anyone besides the Los Angeles Lakers, you have to understand that it would be a rental situation. It would not be like Paul George's situation where, you know, you may hope that he's going to buy into the culture and then you're able to sign him in free agency. It's not going to happen. So just to make sure we understand this correct, you're saying that a source says that no matter where Anthony Davis is traded, the Los Angeles Lakers, it's that's his, the long-term destination. That's, that is his long-term destination. And, you know, I quote, you can drive the Ferrari, but you cannot keep it. Ooh. It will be a lease, not a own. Ooh. Well, in that case, Rex, what's a fair trade for Anthony Davis? Because, again, Brandon Ingram is apparently the guy that wasn't included in that. We saw when Chris Paul got traded to Houston. Seven players and a draft pick. So this is not 
territory we haven't been in before. I think Magic offered Rob Palenka today also. <laughs> it almost sounded like the Clippers situation when Doc Rivers was involved right, in the trade. Right. You know what I mean? mean? Get him over there. I think for the Lakers, obviously, they want to get it done. Uh, watching Anthony, Kentucky, University of Kentucky. Watching Anthony Davis uh, just then. I don't know that I can remember a player, a great player, in a long while that has been more ready to get up out of where he is. He's ready to go. You can see it in every answer he gives. And look, I, I, I follow him, obviously, um, you know, from his college days. I'm a fan. He's a guy who sacrificed. He sacrificed when DeMarcus went in there. He plays winning basketball. He knows how to do that. And I think he's ready to get back, back to that. He's given a lot to, to this franchise, and I think he's just ready to go. Here, here's my thing, and this is why I get upset, because so many times people say, well, you know, he's bailing out on the organization. That's not the case here. When you have an individual that's 25 in the prime, and I, I want the viewers and the listeners to understand this and hear this well and see this as I'm telling it to you. If you're 25 years old, just put yourself in this kid's situation. Where would you want to be? It's a couple organizations around the association that get it right. And we're talking about money and all-stars and all that. All the personal accomplishments is amazing. But you're talking about winning now. Lakers, Miami, Detroit, Mavs, Spurs, Warriors, Bulls. These are the teams that won championships in the more recent future, in, in the recent, recent past. And he want to submit his legacy going forward. Preach tough juice. <laughs> and certainly to back that up, Anthony Davis, by requesting this trade, uh, apparently is going to leave $80 million on the table. So clearly legacy more important than money for Anthony Davis in this situation. We have breaking news. Uh, according to Chris Haynes, LeBron James will not play tonight against the Golden State Warriors due to, quote, load management. League sources tell Yahoo Sports. Now, LeBron James played 44 minutes in his first game back. The Lakers are facing the Golden State Warriors. The same team he hurt his groin against on Christmas Day. Rex, duck, what ducking, do you make of this? KD Itis. <laughs> he's ducking KD. Steph Itis. Clay Itis. No. I, I, I was surprised he played 44 minutes the other night. Obviously, it's a little bit of a maintenance move, right? Yeah. I, I, I thought he, he said it, you know, prior to this game, you know, right after he played so many minutes. It's going to be one of the situations that I have to see how my body respond because we don't know. We run yeah. an emotional high after a basketball game. Everything's still feeling good. You got to win. Uh, you, you look extremely sharp after being off for so many, so many uh, months, you know what I mean, since playing, what, December 25th? Yeah. Yep. So now he's back, and he probably felt a little ailments and, you know, probably just took the safe approach and getting back out there. Well, Karan, before he returned, you said, look, LeBron doesn't look like he's 100% from seeing him in no. practice. So where do you think he was when he returned if he wasn't 100%? I think he was somewhere between 75 and 80, and that's still better than – 80% of the association. So when you're able to go out there with his high basketball IQ, and just mind you, you know, if LeBron's out there on the basketball court, the coverage has changed. You know, you have to give him so much attention that it enables other guys to be the best possible version of themselves, have an open opportunity. How old, how old is LeBron now? 34. 34. You know, you start, and, and this makes sense. It, it's, a, it's a maintenance move. Yeah. You don't, you don't get groins and hamstrings when you're 24. But you start getting them later on. And when you start getting them, you've really got to, you, you've got to be careful to not come back and do too much too fast. Young player that seems to be taking a bit of the load on his shoulders. Brandon Ingram recently really carrying this team offensively with no Lonzo Ball in the lineup as well. Really nice player, and you've kind of been waiting for him. You saw, you know, the length and the, all the skill set when he was at Duke. And he's really, you know, he got suspended early in the year, starting to put it together. He's a beautiful offensive player. Yeah, he, you know, he's a complete player. You know, we went from, you know, scoring the basketball in the paint with his wiry strength to now, you know, being able to have that mid-range consistent shot and now playing with LeBron and Rondo. He's been able to, you know, start knocking down 